What a wonderful start to our service. Good morning. And welcome to First Church Congregational. I'm Bill Ingraham. I serve as senior pastor of this church. And on behalf of all of our members, welcome to this church today. It looks to me like there may be some first-time visitors with us today. If you are here for the first time, we'd like to give you a gift of a coffee mug so you can have a cup of coffee on us. Um, if you'd raise your hand if you're here for the first time. And I know Bill is. Um, or are you not? Have you been here before, Bill? Oh, they're not. Okay, never mind. So, no. all right, nobody. Sorry, put the mugs back. All right. Well, there you go. I thought for sure. Well, glad you're here. Oh, well, yeah, right. Um, you don't get to just collect mugs. Um, although I suppose we could sell if we needed to. Well, okay. So glad that everyone's here today. People who are watching us li online, thank you for joining us. Remember, you can help us reach more people. If you do the thumbs up or the heart, that just adds to the algorithm that makes it go to more folks. Also, if you'll check in and put a little note so that folks who are online can see and you can have community together online too. All right, a few announcements. There are a couple of meetings this week. On Monday night at 6.30, the outreach ministry team, and on Wednesday night at 6.30, the open and affirming committee, they're going to have a special guest, a member of the conference staff, Kathy Carpenter from the Southern New England Conference of the UCC. Um, and so if you wanna be a part of that meeting, feel free to come. If you have questions, speak with Sue Newton, who's chair of that committee on behalf of the church. Um, and we're gonna read the warrant. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, as your chair of the board, it is my honor to read the warrant of the First Church Congregational United Church of Christ, the 295th annual meeting of First Church Congregational Methuen, Massachusetts will be held in person at 11 a.m. on Sunday, May 19th, 2024. Business to be conducted at the annual meeting is outlined below. Welcome and call to order by the chair of the board, Josh Ferry. Opening prayer and necrology, Reverend William D. Ingraham. Old business, review of minutes of the May 21, 2023 annual meeting. Board report, pastor's report, treasurer's report. New business will include adoption of the 2024-25 budget, nominating committee report, election of officers, and other business. Uh, we will then have closing prayer and benediction by Reverend Ingraham and a call for adjournment by yours truly. Uh, this is submitted by Christine Bain, the church board secretary, and as a reminder, it is a potluck. So please bring something great and we'll all share it together as we enjoy our annual meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Josh. That's a, um, not only is it a constitutional duty, but it is an ancient part of congregational polity that the warrant gets read several weeks before the meeting. And you'll notice it's posted on all the doors. Um, that's another part of the tradition. So I do want to say something about Mother's Day as we start into the joys and concerns. So I want to wish a happy Mother Day, Mother's Day to every mother here. Um, my mother, um, who obviously was a mother, she had me and she had my older sister. Um, for a long time, she had a very difficult time getting pregnant, could not get pregnant, then had a um, tubal pregnancy and after the surgery was told she would never have children. And so my mother just dreaded Mother's Day every year. Then um, one time she just knew she had a tumor um, growing, and then one day it kicked. <laughs> um, and the doctor said, Billy made tumors don't kick. It was my sister. Um, although I do tell my sister sometimes the jury's still out, tumor or not, we don't know. Um, and so then they had my sister and they had me, but my mother still carried in her the memory of all those years that she came and on Mother's Day she was so sad because she wasn't one. So I also want to say um, to anyone who may have wanted to be a mother and was not, or somebody who's had a, having maybe a, having a hard time right now as a mother, that might be the case too, um, that there are lots of ways to be mothering in the world and we are grateful for every soul that strives to be a presence of love and care in the world. In this church today, we celebrate all mothers. Um, and you know, Mother's Day originally was a movement um, following the Civil War um, to recognize the great loss that had happened and there was hope that if we celebrated and empowered mothers, maybe we could have peace on earth. So I offer that prayer today as well. 
So some other prayers. Um, we are praying by name for John Murray, who is still recovering um, on IV antibiotic, but at home. And so we pray for him, his wife, his daughters, all of his family. Um, we also pray then for anybody who is healing from surgery, facing surgery, undergone tests, waiting for tests, waiting to hear results from tests, waiting for tests to happen, um, living with long-term physical ailments, whatever it might be, we offer all those prayers when we come together here. We also pray for caregivers, um, people who are offering care and support to others in need. Um, and we always, always pray mental health, people living with any expression of substance use disorder, and of course we pray for peace on earth. And then the prayer that I'll be adding um, from now through the last of my time here, um, because I've answered a call to go to another church sometime later this summer, um, as we pray for this church in the midst of transition, the Spirit has always brought you exactly where you need to be. The board's working hard in the background, getting um, paperwork together, all the things that need to happen um, to empower you all for the next step. So um, trust the process, speak to Josh, speak to any member of the board. Um, and if you have any feelings you want to share with me, speak with me. I'll be glad to talk with anybody as we live through this time of transition together. Those are the joys and concerns I have listed. I know there are always other ones that don't get shared either with me or we choose not to share them because of the need for discretion. We trust God to hear our prayers and hold us in love and healing power. And now we officially begin our service as we bring in the light of Christ. join me in the call to worship as printed in your bulletin. We gather here in Christ's name, seeking God's presence among us. We will sing and offer prayers, opening ourselves to meet the holy. On their last evening together, Jesus offered prayer among his disciples. He prayed for God to hold them together and grant them strength. As he prayed, he taught them of God's enduring love and protection. Christ's promise of love and protection holds true for us today.
in your bulletin. Our loving heavenly God, we have gathered in Christ's name. We offer you prayers and heartfelt praise. Open our hearts and minds to your spirit's power. Help us to hear the words of Jesus that promise our unity with you and with each other. And whatever the days before us may bring, help us to trust your love and protection to see us through. Until your kingdom comes and your will be done on earth, these things we ask in the name of Jesus. Amen. You may be seated, and I invite children and youth to come up for a moment with me here at the front. Good morning. Good to see you. So I wanted to talk about being made different. And I'm going to start with a silly thing I experienced once. I remember one time, um, I was just there. I didn't say it. Somebody said to um, a friend of mine, I was at his house, and he said to his mom, Mom, would you make me a sandwich? And she said, poof, you're a sandwich. Like she was magic or something. And I remember thinking that was really funny. I just started laughing. Poof, you're a sandwich. Obviously, what he wanted was for her to make a sandwich for him. But what she said was, poof, like she was a magician, because he had literally said, make me a sandwich. She acted like she was going to make him a sandwich. Okay, you all don't think, even to this day, nobody thinks that's as funny as I do, or as I, <laughs> Mrs. B is laughing, not because I'm funny, but because it's how funny, it's funny how funny I'm not. Um, but anyway, that's good. I'm glad, I'm glad. I appreciate it. Um, so sometimes, that was a silly way of starting off into, sometimes there are ways that we get changed. And you don't always know what causes it. Sometimes you'll have an experience and all at once your eyes see things differently from that time on. You really um, see things in a different way. Uh, some of the things that can happen, they're big high holy moments in our lives. So one of those high holy moments might be like a wedding when you get married. And even though a couple has loved each other very much before, um, after the wedding actually happens and it's done in worship, at least for us, and um, done in this place with the gathering of family and friends, um, people feel different. Afterwards, it's a moment when they changed. I remember I had been a pastor for years and years, licensed to do it, and then finally I met all the criteria, and when I was ordained, um, it felt different to me all at once. Things had changed. Well, the scripture today that will be read a little bit later has in it Jesus talking about sanctifying himself so that his followers can be sanctified, so that we can be sanctified. So have you heard the word sanctified? Okay, any idea what sanctified means? It means made into saints, saint making. So Jesus, um, in other words, made holy, made capable of knowing good and doing good. But really, and I'll talk to the um, adults about this after you all have gone into Sunday school. It also is a way of saying that Jesus' followers are set aside for a specific purpose, which is to trust God and serve God in the world. So we're 
sanctified. And I think about sanctification, it's not something that happens just in one moment. Poof, you're a sandwich. Poof, you're a saint. Um, but it is a thing that happens over a lifetime as we get closer to God, more capable of understanding God's love for ourselves, and more committed to sharing God's love in the world. That's how we become more like saints. And so in our lives, we try to be faithful um, receiving God's love and sharing it with others. What I want to ask you to think about today as you're getting ready to go to Sunday school um, is how you can become somebody who lives God's love in the world, in your family, in school, here in the church, anywhere you go. Because as we get sanctified, um, made saints on God's behalf, we're set apart for the job of loving others. Okay, let's say a prayer together. It's a repeat after me prayer. Dear God, make us saints, we pray. Help us to love ourselves and others. Amen. Thank you so much. I'll tell you what it is that Lori just came and told me so you don't have to sit here and wonder what it was she was telling me. She said, oh, Bill, we weren't laughing because we thought you were funny. We were laughing because it was funny how the kids were looking at you going, what is he talking about? So anyway, I'm glad she told me that. Now we come to our time of prayer together. I invite you to join me in heart and spirit as we offer God our prayers. Let us pray. We are gathered here, loving God, in this place where we have gathered many times before, some of us week after week for a lifetime. And as we gather and offer love and kindness to each other and laugh and cry together and hear stories together and remember things together, or even as we sit in this moment of stillness and quiet, the Sunshine streaming through stained glass windows, the piano music gently in the back of our minds. We sense the holy here and long to be more close to you, that we could be filled with the sense of your love and your presence in a way that would make all the difference in our lives, giving us something to found our lives upon, a solid rock, a foundation, a sure um, a place for us to stand, to walk, to live, and also for us to trust that whatever might come our way, you've got our back. Your love will hold us. Your care will guide and strengthen us. Your power will inspire us and make it possible for us to live. Whatever might come our way, and to be a presence of love in the world. For as you have loved us and love us still, you give us the capacity also to love, to love boldly and faithfully and with generosity. We take this moment to offer our prayers, grateful for the love that holds us and for the capacity for healing your spirit brings to us and to the world. We already have prayed for people recovering from surgery, facing surgery, undergoing um, medical tests and treatments, waiting for diagnoses, uh, uh, living through long-term uh, medical issues that they face. We thank you for your healing power and the love that can hold us and give us strength to find our way through. We thank you for doctors and nurses and physicians' assistants and all the caregivers who are a part of the medical healing arts, the gift your spirit has brought through their education, their practice, their commitment. Help us to be a part of your healing 
power in the world. And teach us what is our part in the process of healing. That we can offer love and care and support and be a community that lives for healing. We're aware too that physical um, injury and illness is not the only illness we have. There is mental and spiritual illness as well. And we pray for healing and a sense of well-being for therapies and medications, uh, friendships, love, patience, all the things we need to find our way through any expression of mental illness. And likewise, in the face of addictions, we give you thanks for any moment of sobriety and ask you to help us to work the steps and trust in your higher power and live one day at a time, trusting you'll show us our way through. Whether we ourselves live with a substance use disorder, whether it is someone we love or care about, whatever the relationship may be, help us to find our way. And we pray for this church, faithful in this place for nearly three centuries. Your spirit always has shown us the way and we are thankful for that. Help us in the early days of this time of transition to place our trust in you. Inspire the leaders of this church to do the best they can in preparing the next way and help all of us to live together, seeking how the gospel can be proclaimed in this place, on this hill, not just today, but all the days that are to come. We pray for peace in the world, aware of war and injustice in many places, and ask you to give us hearts that long for peace and to strive to make a difference in all we say and do. And now we pause for a moment of silent prayer, trusting you to hear the prayers we bring to offer in Christ's name. Hear now the prayers we pray in silence. All these things we pray in the name of Jesus, who has taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now we continue to praise God as we offer God our tithes and our gifts.
We thank you, God, for the abundance with which you bless us and for these gifts that we have received and now return to you trusting that you will direct their use both in this church and the world that your will might be done. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.
The scripture reading this morning comes from John 17, 6 through 19, which can be found on page 879 through 880 in the Pew Bible. I have made your name known to those whom gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me, I have given to them, and they have received them, and know in truth that I came from you. And they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf, I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you, Holy Father. Protect them in your name that you have given me so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them in your name that you have given me. I guarded them and not one of them was lost except the one destined to be lost so that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you and I speak these things in the world so that they may have my joy made complete in themselves. I have given them your word and the word has hated them because they do not belong to the world just as I do not belong to the world. I am not asking you to take them out of the world, but I am asking you to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world just as I do not belong to the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself so that they may also be sanctified in truth. May the living word of God speak to us through these ancient words of the scripture. Thank you, Rich. It's great to have you in the rotation of liturgists in our church. So, um, I don't know that you knew Um, It seems like, oh good, she got it. It seems like I'm a little loud. Maybe I've moved my mic too high. Um, I don't know if you are aware that last Thursday was Ascension Day, not necessarily a big day that we celebrate. Some years I have chosen to have the Ascension Day text be today. Uh, Mike has certainly um, referred to the Ascension text um, in the um, hymns that are happening today. But the reason I want to mention Ascension Day, so Ascension Day, the idea of Ascension Day is it was the moment when Jesus, who had been raised from the dead and left the tomb empty behind, um, at one point had been with the disciples and then no longer was. And so Ascension Day is when he um, was taken up into heaven. My favorite artwork of Ascension Day. I don't know if you've seen those ancient paintings of Ascension Day, but my favorite ones are the ones that show the disciples on the ground and the blue sky, and then there's a couple of feet hanging down out of the top of the painting. I just love those. Um, We know scientifically um, Ascension is not, uh, if Jesus actually was taken up like that, we know that the further up he went, the less atmosphere he was, and we know what would happen to the body um, if it had no atmosphere. So it, I don't think scientifically that's how you look at it, but there, it's clear. Jesus was with the disciples. Jesus was arrested on the night of betrayal. He was crucified. He died. He was buried. He rose from the dead. He was with the disciples again, and then he wasn't with them anymore. Ascension um, helps make clear. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. To put it in the name of a creed we don't even um, say in this church, but resonates in my heart from my childhood. So we are literally today, on the liturgical calendar anyway, between Christ's ascension into heaven when he left the disciples on their own 
and next Sunday, which is Pentecost, when we celebrate the coming of the Spirit and the birth of the church at the Spirit's coming. And so we are in that um, unknown time in between, waiting. The scripture reading for today, this is, um, it was last week too, but it is again today the high priestly prayer uh, in the Gospel of John. It's a prayer that Jesus prayed with his disciples at the Last Supper on Monday, Thursday, um, right before the betrayal happened. Judas already has left at this point, and that's the reference in the scripture reading. Um, I did not lose any of them except for the one that was destined to be lost to fulfill the scriptures. That was, that's about Judas, that little line um, in the prayer. And it's Jesus' words to God to prepare the disciples that they are going to be in God's care in these final days as they um, strive to live into the future, even as the world is changing all around them. And so the very first part of the passage is an assurance from Jesus Um, that he is their connection to God. Um, The idea being, Jesus, by his very nature, was both human and divine. That's the whole notion of the incarnation that we celebrate at the birth of Jesus, that God is present in Jesus in the world in a way that God has never been known um, otherwise, and that Jesus both shares in the divine nature, able to reflect for us exactly who God really is and to hold on to divine love in ways that seem impossible to us and to be so dedicated to doing God's wills in way that God's will in ways that we often are not able to do because of our own frail humanity. Yet, Jesus also was human, one of us, frail, um, a limited lifetime, Um, capable of being wounded and frightened and afraid. And in seeing how Jesus made clear God and the world, we come to be connected with who God is too and to understand as frail humans that we belong to God and always will. It's an essential part of his message to the disciples before he leaves them in this prayer on the final night. And the next one, and it's kind of combined with that, his prayer that they would be one and they would be safe in the world. I say they, referring back to those gathered with Jesus at the Last Supper, but also us gathered in this room, followers of Jesus, his disciples now so many generations later. Jesus made the disciples one with each other and one with God and one in ministry to all the world and prayed for the followers of Christ to be safe in the world because what we stand for and who we are can in many ways be in opposition to what the world is all about. We take sides on love not only self-benefit. We take sides on justice, not only um, individual freedom, but freedom for everyone. We recognize each and every person as a beloved child of God and proclaim their goodness even when others cannot, will not see it. Jesus claimed and proclaimed that the disciples are one together and one with him and one with God, and God would work to make them safe. just want us to think for a moment about our unity as followers of Jesus, the love that we have for each other, the ways we are bound and connected, even in relationships that can be challenging and difficult at times. Still, we are called to love one another and care for one another and be supportive of one another in the midst of whatever life may bring along its way. It reminds me of um, any relationship when in the midst of struggle, it's very easy to say, oh, to heck with this. Um, But instead recognizing, no, love is going to win. Love is going to be my um, guiding force. Love is going to hold us together. Love holds the church together. And through whatever might come our way, empowers us to stay together and to serve 
and to be Christ's faithful disciples. And then finally, that bit about poofier sandwich. <laughs> um, Christ calls upon the disciples, calls upon God to sanctify the disciples. And it really is in this sense in the scripture, um, yes, saint making, being made holy in Christ's name as we try to take on ourselves a sense of um, divine love and mercy and compassion that will inspire all that we are and all that we do. But it also recognizes that we are set apart for a certain role. And that role is to be Christ's ministers in the world. So we're united with God. We're held together as a community. We're um, inspired and empowered by God's strength and protection and care. And then we're set apart to be doing love in the world around us. What are the ways we are willing to do to be expressing divine love in the world around us. There's a lot of things this church does, whether it's in hunger ministry or back to school projects or all the different ways that we strive to be making love known in our community around us. Lines of cars each week circle around this property and way down the street um, as folks come to get food. Children go back to school with a sense of joy and excitement in part because of the work that we do. Um, children come to this building every single day during the week and are offered love and care and a chance to laugh and learn and grow and become good beings in the world. We help their families and we help the entire community. And week after week we gather in this room. We offer God our prayers. We wait upon the Spirit stirring. We try to make real in our own hearts a sense of God's word and intention, not just for the blessing of being in this room, but to be empowered to go out into the world when the service is over. Okay, after coffee hour, first we go to coffee hour and we um, get a snack and get a beverage. And, um, but then to go out into the world and live our lives as faithful followers of Jesus. Because we're called to be a church not just for who we can be when we come together, no matter how much we love and appreciate the experience of being community. We're called to be church to make God's love known in the world. We're called to be the church to make God's remarkable, redeeming power known in the world. We're called to be the church to express to others the very compassion and forgiveness God has shared with us and make a difference in the world. We're called as a church, strengthened and protected by God, to offer strength and protection to the most vulnerable, the most um, ill at ease, the ones that need comfort the most, that we can share the love and grace we know in this very room and make a difference in the world around us. All of this we learn as we're between the ascension of Christ and the coming of the Spirit, trusting that in the days to come, God will show us the way and give us everything that we need to be faithful right here and wherever the future may take us. Will you please pray with me? God of love and compassion, we give you thanks that we can gather here and hear your word and seek to know your love made real within us and among us. Help us to be the faithful church you need us to be, that right here on this hill, in this community, and in the world, we might be about following Jesus and making his ways known in the world. These things we pray in Christ's name. Amen.
Receive now the benediction. Go now into the world to serve God and your neighbor in all that you do. You are sent in Christ's name. May the peace of Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and always. Amen. Amen.